Hello and welcome to this video. Now, this is a video that's been requested a lot on this channel. Now, from comments on the video directly to instant messages on social media apps to all various random ways which my lovely community like yourself have been able to reach out to me on, a lot of the times I get asked the same question and that question is simply, what's better? QuickBooks or Xero? Now, despite the name of the channel, Oh, just need to take a quick drink from uh, my sponsored cup. And just to clarify, I'm not sponsored by QuickBooks in any way. I do get a lot of people asking me, well, what's better, QuickBooks Zero? Surely there's got to be an answer. And there's two things I need to say to this. The first one is the answer is not so simple. It is very much a depend scenario. And the second point I want to make is the fact that why you should be able to trust my judgment on this. Now, first of all, even though if you cut me now, I definitely do bleed green. I am a QuickBooks quote unquote fanboy. But even though that's the case, actually, I don't know, I wasn't always that. You see, I actually started my career as a Sage fanboy, Sage Line 50 to be precise. And Sage Line 50 was my absolute dream piece of software back when I was using it. Clearly now things have changed and people have progressed and I've moved on. And I've grown and I've actually changed my opinion to what's best for me. You see, what's best for me isn't a piece of software that makes my life easier. It's a piece of software that makes my client's life easier. If my clients can have a better understanding of their finances and understand what's going on with their business and be able to have a better grasp and control of what's going on, then actually my life becomes so much easier. If I'm constantly having to try and explain and fight and trying to make the figures actually match to what they should be and constantly having to clean up the figures, then I'm not in a good position to be able to advise my clients. So my whole point of what software is right for me isn't necessarily what's right for me and me personally, it's what's right for my clients and how they're going to have the best experience. So as I've already changed allegiances from one platform provider to another, I'm prepared to do it again if I need to. I'm always going to put first what's best for my clients. And if that means it's Xero or Free Agent or QuickBooks or Sage or any of the other platforms out there, then you know what? That's the best software on the market. Other reason you can trust my judgment on this one? Well, I train QuickBooks online, not just to myself, not just to my clients, not just to this wonderful community or people who reach out to me on here. But I actually train other accountants. I spend a lot of time with other accountants. And that is a point where I can understand where clients get frustrated and I can see where accountants get frustrated. And I should be able to see both sides of the argument for when it's time to make a decision. So with all that in mind, let's find out once and for all, what's better, QuickBooks Online or Sage Line 50? If only we could do a review on Sage Line 50. Obviously, what I meant to say was zero. Let's have a look. Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Aaron Patrick. I am a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer for Fancy New Logo. Very relevant for this video that QuickBooks chap on the internet and also head of account here at Boffix. Now, as we said in today's video, we are going to compare Zero versus QuickBooks from a QuickBooks perspective. You are not taking away from me these rose tinted glasses. I am going to go in fully in the mindset of QuickBooks can do this. Can Zero do that? And what can Zero do that QuickBooks can't? Let's go straight into it. Okay, so in front of me now is Zero itself. So I'm going to go to the login page at the top. Now, straight away, one of the things I actually love about Zero is the way you sign in. Like literally, it comes up on my watch here, and I go, "Yep, that's me." Signed in, and I'm signed in. So much better than having to wait for a number to come on your phone. I was a Apple user, I know it just pops up and I can populate it and all that, but I still just want to be able to click a little button on my watch. But still, just being able to click a little button on my watch makes my life so much easier. So I'm um, chef's kiss on that one. 
Okay, so I'm not going to be overly negative in this video. That's not what this video is designed to be. But it might be best if I get rid of my initial gripes out of the way first, just so that then we can concentrate on some of the better parts of it. Now, one of the benefits of this is it's fully customizable. Every single one of these boxes, there's little dots at the top here. And I can edit things like, let's show the budget column in here. Let's go in and let's edit the budgets themselves and it'll take me to the direct place. Top right hand corner, I do have an edit dashboard button. So I can go in and I can edit things around, move this around here maybe, maybe move this all the way to the bottom, maybe put that one up there and save changes and my dashboard has been updated accordingly. So I love the customization of this. I just feel like it's a little bit too flat. There's not much here to kind of entice me. It has given me really, really relevant information and thumbs up to that, but it's not giving me in an inviting way. And I do think that this is a place where they would be able to make some little tweaks and adjustments here just to make this much more of an inviting dashboard, which then I think would, would elevate the product into a much more of a user-friendly element. Now, again, before I go too far and we get into the meat of things, let me just clarify two of my instant issues I have from day one. The first one is my belief that this software is designed more for the accountant in mind than the end user. And there's some massive benefits of that. Means that there are better ways from an accountant to be able to extract some data than we've ever had in QuickBooks Online. And also means that the data itself, we should have a much more of an audit trail behind it to give us that confidence that everything is how it should be. Once I understand the logic of that and I understand why you would go down that route, it does frustrate me a little bit because in my opinion, software should be customer first and then us as accountants, we should then be able to just deal with whatever we get thrown at us. As long as we can have confidence that the customer knows what to do and the end consumer knows what to do, then that's for me the most important part. My second criticism I have of it is very much related to that, is they don't give you that opportunity to be able to reconcile bank accounts and understand bank accounts. It's telling me that I'm reconciling. Well, I'm not reconciling, I'm actually doing the bookkeeping at this point. To me, reconciling should be the difference. Now, one key enhancement they've made here is that we have the balance at the top here and the balance in zero. That wasn't there for a long, long time, but that is a crucial step forward in the right direction. These two figures should be the same. That's the confidence that we should then have to make sure that we've got everything in the right place. There is this option for a reconciliation report, but in no place am I going in here and be able to state what the bank statement should be. Therefore, I don't have that confidence to put this right. But that's the negatives. Let's not worry about that too much. The look and feel of it. Well, we don't really have on the left-hand side that panel that we used to in QuickBooks, but we still have this top bar up here. From here, I can jump into Dashboard, which I already have. I can go into Business, which gives me an opportunity to get some cash flow, business snapshot, look, look at invoices, look at bills to pay and expense claims. I've got accounting, which gives me the chance to look at my bank accounts, reports, and then aid debtors, payables, chart of accounts, and all those items. And there is a payroll section and a contact section. On the right-hand side, I have my plus button, which quickly gives me the option to quickly create something. Wonder where they got that idea from. And then I have my search bar and my notification center. So, so far, it's actually quite similar to what we have in the QuickBooks area. I think the one key difference there and something you should really be aware of, QuickBooks has taken that new step of having a brand new left-hand navigation that's designed customer first, client first. We don't have that here. So you do need to have a little bit of an ounce about you about how counting should work. There's no obvious section here to say invoice quotes and sales review. Well, that's going to be my customer section, but you need to know that invoices mean customers, quotes mean customers, sales overview means customers. Same here, bill to pay, purchase orders, purchase overview. Well, you need to know that that's your supplier section to know that that's the area that you need to go to to deal with it. Business snapshot is something I absolutely love and I think it's a great addition. Gives you that opportunity to really see how your business is doing. Not just reports, but using analytics as well, which honestly is something I absolutely would love to see more of in QuickBooks Online. 
If we look at a standard transaction, so in this case, an invoice transaction, very similar to QuickBooks, we get to start typing in here to find our contacts. We get the option to bring in the last items, an invoice number, issue due date, and it does give me the option to get paid faster. I can have credit and debit card options, bank payments, or if we already use one, we have the option to connect to a brand new one. And this to me is a much better user interface than QuickBooks has. The option to credit and debit, debit cards powered by Stripe, but you could also use Cresco if you want to. Direct debit by GoCardless, but there's other opportunities if you want to. So there's a much more customization. Choose our currency, if it's tax inclusive, tax exclusive, tax inclusive, and no tax, well, that definitely comes to exactly how we see it, isn't it? What item it is we want to bring in, what description, what quantity, what price, what account it's going to. That's something you don't get in QuickBooks. That is all related to the product and service over here. What tax rate you're going to be putting on it, amount, and it's going to bring that in. Still have the option to attach files if you need to, history, and add some notes. Prove an email, as you'd expect, at the top, approve and add number, prove and get a link, or prove and print PDF. Let's just save and close for now. Now, one of the good things and great things about this is the fact that they become draft. And a draft solution in here means that then you can actually move it over and approve it. And that is one of the key features where, for me, I sometimes have to bring my clients over to zero from QuickBooks or from another provider because they need that approval system. That is really, really powerful. Now, if we move over to the expense side of thing let's bring up a bill very similar layout to what we've just looked at i can attach a file and i can bring the items in and the account that they need to relate to assign expense customer so same as billable i can save it and then again i have the option of awaiting approval the bank screen as we've kind of already looked at i get the option to match discuss create a new transaction and save that transaction i get a really cool option of doing cash coding which makes it really quick and easy for me to apply what the costs are so i can do speedily do some accounts i can look at what bank statements have actually come through from a reporting point of view there's a lot of new reporting old reporting but you're going to get every type of report you want let's just show you some simple ones love 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 this tips and tricks option in the right hand side from report options just as before drill into figures so i can make sure i'm happy with them and also I can compare against period and choose a date range at the top. On the left hand side, there's some really common formats I really appreciate. And on here you do get the fixed asset section as well, which QuickBooks has no option for at all. But in my mind, you better rock into NetTracker anyway and using those guys to see fixed assets. And there we have it, a quick review of what it looks like. So TLDR, basically you've got a very, very similar solution to QuickBooks Online. So if you're used to QuickBooks, then you are going to find some familiarity with this. And as long as you kind of get used to kind of that trigger memory and understanding that, then you're going to be absolutely fine to get your business up and running. Now, for me, I would say that anyone who is probably from a more Sage Line 50 background, then Zero is a better fit for you. And I find that I've always found that, that Zero is a a better fit than QuickBooks would be in terms of just trying to take the same skills you have from Sage Line 50 and move it over. So from Sage to Zero, I think you'll be more familiar and I think that's gonna be really useful for you going. Forward. Overall thoughts, I actually think it's got a lot cleaner than it has been. It was very, very clunky to begin with, but I feel like it's a much cleaner aesthetic nowadays. Hats off to the design team. They've definitely started to go and make it a much more friendlier product. The additions with items like the tip section on the right hand side, that's much more consumer friendly, which I love. Having certain features that QuickBooks simply doesn't have, like a fixed asset register and an approval solution built directly in, is definitely something that is before made me decide which of those is right, which ones we should have, and made me decide on QuickBooks versus Zero. Now, price wise, it's certainly more expensive than QuickBooks. So can I justify the price? Again, the word depends is so important. If your business needs those extra features like the approval solution and the fixed asset register, if you're willing to understand the fact that you need to understand more complex accounting terminology for you to kind of get the most out of the system, then without a doubt, this is definitely worth the price hike. For the vast majority of people out there, personally still think QuickBooks 
is definitely more viable in terms of something that you don't need to understand. You can use it much more of a standalone product without having to understand counting terms quite as much. Big thumbs up with Zero for being able to integrate more payment solutions, having that flexibility to be able to make and receive payments much easier. Thumbs down though, for not having some of the technology we've become so accustomed and so used to. Receipt capture is such a fundamental solution in the way that we use QuickBooks nowadays. Having that built in is one less app I need to worry about, one less app I need to bring in. Having that built in makes it much easier for me to get data from my clients and much easier for my clients to provide data to the solution. Yes, there are third party apps we can install and I get that, but that's another thing we're asking the client to install, another thing we're asking them to bring in. So it's definitely the thumbs down for me on that one. Thumbs up for that analytical approach. Like we should be using more analytics analytical approach for data and for reporting that's how we know if our business is going to go well or not well and i think that's really important my personal opinion down for the ui i don't like it. it just doesn't grab to me in terms of trying to give me confidence in my numbers and trying to give me elements i'm actually bothered about i just feel it very flat very very dare i say old school when we need to be able to bring a bit of positivity and a bit of fun into trying to make those numbers work for us. That's how we entice our clients to keep coming back and seeing the important information and trying to make sure that they are getting the best out of the figures. So overall, what do I think of Zero? I think the solution's absolutely fine. And I have clients who rely on Zero to be able to run their business effectively and efficiently. So with that, what's not to like? Would it be my first recommendation? No. Would I change my name to zero? Yeah. I told him I can be a fighter if you want. I'll be better catch you if you fall. I can make it brighter when it's dark, when it's dark. I told him I would do it all for you. And I know you do it for me. To Aaron Patrick, the zero chap? No. But does that mean it doesn't belong to have a conversation? Certainly not. In fact, actually, the more zero does and the better it becomes, the better it's going to be for everyone. Competition drives innovation. And we need to have as many options like zero out there to give us the opportunity to be able to do channels like this, to showcase new features, to showcase what options our software can do for us, for us to get a better understanding and a better opportunity to get the best out of that software. And if it wasn't for Zero pushing the boundaries, QuickBooks pushing the boundaries, Sage starting to actually catch back up again, then we wouldn't have the innovation that we're having at the moment. Have we looked at every aspect of Zero in this video? Not at all. But then we couldn't do the same in a QuickBooks comparison. At the end of the day, I've made a YouTube career out of actually going through and showing what QuickBooks can and can't do. And done countless amount of videos and countless amount of time than just having a 20 minute video on the, on the subject and on the product won't do it justice. That's why over on the Boffix channel, when we did a comparison between QuickBooks and Xero, first thing we did was get an expert with Xero to at least give us an opportunity to have some fighting talk. And I think that's still by far the most important way of doing this. So my challenge to you guys is to find and reach out to people who are zero specialists. Let's have an all out battle of trying to figure out which of these solutions are better for certain clients. I'm definitely up for doing more content with people who are looking to be experts in the zero sage and everything else. And I just need your help to go out there and get me in front of those people. So if you know someone who is a sage or zero fanboy or girl, let me know in the comments below or reach out on my behalf. And let's see if we can do a better comparison when there's an actual expert versus expert. If I was going to score this out of 10, I would give it a 7.5. Solid, reliable, does everything it needs to do, but it's still missing that extra bit of something, that extra bit of spark that gives it that ability for you, invites you to log in on a regular basis, invites you to want to go there and be able to go and get the most out of this software. That's my personal opinion on it. Let me know in the comments below if I've missed anything, anything else I should have taken into consideration. 
anything else that really would have elevated that score for me then let me know in the comment section below and also let me know if there's any other software you want me to look at sage is definitely one on the horizon that we need to do a video like this on and also we need to make sure we look at free agent and other software solutions but let me know below if there's anything else you want me to look at don't forget to like subscribe share all that sort of stuff let's get this video out there so people can understand what zero is and how it can be applicable to their business my name's been Dan patrick as always this video has been an absolute pleasure to do for you can't wait to see you in the next video bye for now